Joining us now on the phone is Rudy Giuliani, personal attorney for President Trump, speaking with us exclusively after the release of this recording. Uh, Mayor Giuliani, thank you so much for checking in with us tonight. First of all, your reaction to this tape's release. Well, I think it's, first of all, the major point is it's outrageous that someone would tape his client surreptitiously. And number two, it's also foolhardy for them to try to kind of yell and scream and make believe what's on the tape. I agree with you, the tape is a little bit hard to hear, but I assure you that we listened to it numerous, numerous times. And the transcript makes it quite clear at the end that President Trump says, quote, don't pay with cash. Cohen then interrupts and says, no, 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 I got it. And then you hear distinctly, if you're careful and you slow it down, check. And then Cohen follows with no, 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 and then quickly cuts off the tape, which indicates exactly what President Dershowitz was saying, that Cohen doesn't want the rest recorded because it was too exculpatory from the point of view of the president. Rudy, also, the... Oh, go ahead. There's no way the president is going to be talking about setting up a corporation and then using cash, unless no. you're a complete idiot and, yeah. and the president's not an idiot. Uh, Rudy, there, there's a moment tonight on CNN where, where Lonnie Davis, he, he kept saying, well, the, the, we are going, we're showing you that what Giuliani claimed, that Michael Cohen was the one who brought up the issue of cash, not his client, Donald Trump. We're showing you with this tape that it was Trump who brought it up. So he seemed what? to say that the release of the tape, Rudy, was because of you and what you said. Well, the fact is that the president does bring up cash. But he says, don't pay with cash. <laughs> right. And then Cohen says, no, no, no. And the president says, check. And then Cohen says, I got it. The point and, is, and, the president and, wants the transaction to be memorialized. Uh, Rudy, there was a, uh, there's some concern about the decision to waive privilege in this case. A lot of legal commentators, we just uh, talked to Dershowitz well, and Saul Weisenberg. That's all, well and good. that's all well and good for them to say that. But the reality is, that the tape was leaked. Not by us. Nobody believes that. Uh, last week, we were treated to how we leaked it, which Jay and I were laughing about, Jay Sekulow. This was leaked on us with a very, very scurrilous description of what was on this tape, probably by the same people who were lying on CNN. And we had a, we had a correct the record. So we have no problem making this limited uh, release because it is, uh, it, it is uh, corroborative of the president's uh, statement. Now, are, are, so are you still maintaining then tonight that the recording that was released this evening is 100 percent exculpatory toward the president and his previous statements about this? Uh, I think your two guests just said that. There's no indication of any crime being committed on this state, and that is absolutely right. So that's the why we... Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, the, 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 you know what the left is going to say. You know what they do. They've been doing it for months that the president gave the impression that he didn't know about any of these transactions, that this was, this might have been happening, but he didn't know about them. Comment on Air Force One. Uh, Saul referenced this in the, in the previous statement. He said, I didn't know, but it sounds like he knew that something was being set up to perhaps buy the rights to this McDougal story, correct? No. In fact, if you go back a little further on the transcript, I don't know if you have the whole thing, uh, Cohen says that we need financing, and the president says, Wait a second. What? For financing? What? Then he has to explain it. The, the, he, the president did not know about this before this conversation, uh, at least with regard to the transaction that we're talking about. I mean, he may have, he may or may not have known about McDougal's claims. I don't know that, but he didn't know about he didn't know about this transaction. This, this is the conversation in which they talk about how they're going to buy the rights. And the rights, people have to understand who are watching tonight, the rights to this story from the a National Enquirer, the company that owns the National Enquirer, were never purchased. So that transaction did well, not go through. Thing. That's another thing that's absurd about this. What it makes clear is this is uh, at most an attempt to do something. I don't know of any attempt in this category of, of, of crime that they're looking at. So in, in any event, I don't think anyone can suggest that this represents anything where the president did anything wrong. And that's the reason why we waived it. Would we have put it out had it not been leaked? No, we would not have put it out had it not been leaked. But it was being leaked 
in the New York Times under very, very false, with false statements being made about it, which even are worse than the ones you're hearing now. Were you given, were you given a heads up, uh, Rudy, that this was coming out tonight at all, or was this a surprise to you? Yes, we, we found out at 6 o'clock this afternoon. And, uh, look, we've been over the tape over the weekend about five times. What I urge pe people to do is just go on go online, listen to your broadcast, you play the tape, play it three times. The third time you play it, it'll become clear. I've done yeah. tapes even longer than Alan Dershowitz. How about 4,000 hours of mafia people on tape? I know how to listen to them. I know how to transcribe them. This tape is crystal clear when you listen to it. I've dealt with much worse tapes than this. Are you concerned that there are other recordings out there between Cohen and the president? Uh, as a lawyer, as, a, as, as someone who's dealt with people who have been in a lot of trouble before, just like you have, Rudy, the idea of a lawyer taping a client is, is I don't think it takes your breath away, but you know, are there other tapes that you're aware of? Well, today, will, today, will you seek today, to release them yourself? Today, today, um, someone was uh, leaking from, I'm sure their side, it can't be ours, that there were 12 tapes of Cohen with the president. May have been Avenatti, somebody else. Don't quote me on that. He's, he's leaked things like there are a lot more tapes with the president. And Dershowitz yesterday asked him how, because it would be illegal for him to have that information and unethical. But in any event, there are no other tapes with the president. We have all the tapes in our possession. We have transcripts of all of them. We're comfortable with them. And uh, there are no there are no others. Now, Rudy, you've known Lanny Davis a long time. Uh, and like I've known him going back 20 years during the, the Clinton saga. Do you do you have any thoughts about his decision to represent Michael Cohen, given his long not ties a, to the Clintons? No, not at all. I don't have any 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 concerns about that. He's a lawyer. He has a right to represent who he wants. And Michael has a right. I, I question the strategy of doing this, of trying to make a tape say what it doesn't say, or of putting out a tape in which you're kind of proud of the fact that you're a lawyer taping your client, and then thinking you could cooperate with the government. You know to cooperate with the government, you've got to have credibility. First thing that happens is this guy's going to be disbarred. I mean, it's ridiculous. He's, he's a pariah to the legal profession. Uh, there was a moment tonight on CNN, I'm going to play it for you, Rudy, where Chris Cuomo actually asks about this recording and whether it might taint the entire uh, substance of it. Let's watch. Listen. This recording could be argued to be fruit of the poisonous tree, that as counsel, Michael Cohen shouldn't have been recording his counsel, uh, his client, Van Donald J. Trump, now President Trump. How do you get past that, that this whole thing can't look good for Cohen because he should have never done it? Well, I'm not going to shift the topic. It's up to Mr. Cohen to explain why he was taping so he didn't want to well, want to go in there. This is great. Uh, what, what have I ever said? It's up to the president to explain. That's his, that's his lawyer on, on being interviewed by Cuomo. And he throws the ball to his client? I mean, this is, this is crazy representation. Have you ever heard of anything like this? You put out a tape of your client. You then make believe it says something it doesn't say. Believe me, there were three other versions of this before we got to this one that were even worse. And the transcript belies it. If you analyze it, have the patience to analyze it, and don't become uh, like frenetic about it. And now he's saying, "Well, you, you know, uh, you give the ball to give the ball to uh, to my client." So you're. I mean, I, going, I don't mean to harp on the Clinton, you know, connection here, but it is interesting that Cohen chooses the longtime confidant, booster, defender of the Clintons. After everything that happened during the campaign, uh, to represent him here, I mean, was he was he? I mean, you know this how this deal goes, Rudy. Was he was Cohen trying to send some kind of message to the president? You know, look out, here we come, and you, you, you better well, you he, better watch he, out. I mean, it's an odd choice of lawyer, in my view. It's an odd choice. Well, I don't know. I can't comment on that, or I don't know any. You know, someone will say I'm interfering with right to counsel if I do that, and I don't want to do that. And I just question. The whole tactic and Lanny's comment tonight, shifting the thing to Cohen and sort of throwing him on the bus. And Rudy, uh, finally here, you got to be able to answer. For your, you got to yeah. be able to answer for your client or not answer at all. And and finally, Rudy, on the on the issue of talking to Mueller, uh, special counsel um, here, 
the reports came out that you all will talk about collusion and nothing else. Are there any developments on that that you can tell us tonight? Oh, no, I think we've been distracted <laughs> the last couple of days. And they've been distracted with the uh, with the with they're getting ready for the Manafort case. So, I, you know, we'll probably get an answer in the next, hopefully the next couple of days or week. All right. Rudy Giuliani, we really appreciate you Thank joining you. us tonight exclusively. Thank, Thank you, you so much.